In today's Lightroom video, I'm going to show you how you can take a relatively average raw file of the stars like this one right here, and how you can really add punch and interest and color to get a picture like that at the end. So here in Lightroom, I've got my raw file, and I'm sure there are better raw files of stars out there, but I think this is a very realistic example that a lot of people will get once they shot the stars. Now the first thing I'm going to do here is bring up the contrast by 100, and that really increases the visibility of the stars like crazy, but it also brings up the clouds right here, because it was a little bit cloudy when I shot this, However, it almost looks like a little bit of, I don't know, cosmic dust or something. So it's actually a pretty cool look if you ask me. I'm gonna continue by bringing up the highlights also by 100. That just makes some of the stars a bit more punchy, a bit more bright. Not a huge difference, but I'm gonna enhance that with the whites. And you don't wanna bring up the whites by 100, otherwise you can see what it does right here. But if you bring it up to a reasonable level, maybe, yeah, maybe plus 50 in this case, it actually does work. So from before to after, it definitely looks a little bit more interesting, but it also makes some of the darker parts a bit too bright. So to compensate for that, I'm gonna bring down the blacks, and that will just make the black parts even darker, also adds a little bit of contrast that way. And as you can see, it really looks quite interesting and quite more pronounced from before to after. Definitely a huge difference there. However, there is one major thing that you definitely want to do, and that is the color. And I would generally suggest you not to go to a warmish color like this. It really doesn't work if you ask me, but I really prefer the bluish color. I absolutely love that. And of course, you can always go as far as you want, but I think I'm gonna go with kind of a neutral blue tone like this right here. And I think I'm also gonna play around with the tint here. I'm probably not gonna go into the purple stove, but rather make it a little bit more neutral maybe a little bit into the minus here. And also, once again, go into the color temperature to find it just that. All right, that looks pretty good in my opinion. Let's go down to the clarity. And I definitely wanna bring that up by 100. It really brings out the stars and the galaxies a lot. And there is definitely a lot of noise. And clarity doesn't really help in that regard but I'm gonna go to the noise reduction in a second. Before I do that though, let's go into the vibrance and saturation. Here, just play around with it, see what works best, and definitely don't wanna add any vibrance, but maybe with the saturation, yeah, just a little bit of saturation. But actually, before I go down, let me go to the blacks again, and I just wanna bring them down a little bit more to make the entire picture seem a little bit darker and more nightish. So going down to the tonal curve, just gonna play around with the sliders here. They probably won't have too big of an impact. As you can see, the highlight slider almost did nothing here. But the lights, I actually love the look of the lights, especially towards the middle there, makes it look a lot more interesting. And then with the rest of these sliders, just gonna fine tune everything. I don't wanna make it look too dark because I still want a little bit of overall brightness in some parts. But I think, yeah, maybe just a little bit into the minus shadows here. So here's before the tonal curve, here's after, just a little bit more further fine adjustment. So before I do anything else though, let's go into the detail here. And you know, I shot this picture at ISO 3200 with a Canon 600D and you can definitely see that there is a ton of noise, but going into the plus noise reduction will definitely help that. Just be sure not to go too far with that, otherwise your entire picture will just lose a lot of detail. And I personally really don't like the look like this. So maybe around 10, 15 is kind of as far as I would go. But the other tool down here, which is almost more important, is the color noise reduction. I'm gonna bring that up by 100 as well. And that will definitely make the entire picture a lot cleaner. Now, because this is so much color noise and so much noise overall, 
I'm even gonna bring the smoothness to a hundred. Let me actually maybe go a bit further into the noise reduction after all. It's about plus 25, but I really don't wanna go any further than that. And if I show you in the histories real quick from before any detail adjustments from this right here, Definitely looks way more noisy to afterwards, looks a lot better, even though it's certainly not perfect. So zooming out again, I think that actually looks pretty damn cool, but I do want to find adjust some of the colors a little bit further. So what I'm going to do is go into the split toning, go into the highlights and just see what I want to do here. Just really go through all of these colors. I want to keep it relatively bluish, maybe maybe a little bit purplish actually. Yeah, purple actually looks pretty cool, so I think I'm gonna go with that for the highlights, because of course this is the highlights and the highlights will mainly adjust the colors within the bright parts and not so much the dark sh shadowy parts in the background. So I'm gonna find adjust the actual saturation here, maybe around 75, quite a lot, but it looks quite good. And then I'm gonna go into the shadows and I think I'm gonna go for a bluish look here. Yeah, maybe a bluish look like this would work pretty well. And of course, find adjust the saturation so it's not quite as overwhelming. So that is before the split toning and that is afterwards, definitely a huge difference. And of course, if you don't like that, you can really choose any color you would like. Going down, let's see if there's anything else that I really want to do to the picture, but I don't really think there is, at least in terms of the global adjustment. So let's go into the local adjustments real quick and just gonna grab a graduated filter right here. It's definitely visible that the top part of the picture is a lot darker. So I'm gonna grab a graduated filter over the top right here and just kind of go a little bit into the plus exposure, maybe plus shadows, a little bit into the minus contrast even just to equivalent that out and make it look more like the rest of the picture. And maybe I'm even going to do that for the very bottom right here. Just going to go a little bit into the plus shadows, a little bit less into the contrast. And that works quite well. So from before these graduated filters to after. You know what? I'm actually going to grab another graduated filter here, drag it over the bottom of the picture with a very soft edge and go into the color. And let's see what I can do here. So. I could really go for all sorts of colors, but I think I'm just gonna add a little bit of purple here. So, well, let's just fine tune the actual hue first. And then of course go into a saturation that looks a little bit more natural. So I'm just gonna angle that correctly and maybe even bring it over the bottom right. And then grab another one over the bottom left. This time also go into the color, but go for a little bit more warmish color. So just like that and of course once again adjust the actual saturation. So this is really just kind of playing around with differentiation and I think it works quite well. I might even grab another one just for the very top here and go for a bit of a more lightish blue here just like that. And I might even have to decrease the saturation for the very top here so I can at least get a bit of light blue in there and I really want to angle it once again so it looks natural and all but I think that actually looks pretty cool so here's before any graduated filters and here is after not only does it work better in terms of the exposure from before to after but also the colors are way more complex and more interesting I really really like that look yeah so let's see, I think I'm gonna go real quick into the rail filters as well. Make sure I have my feather at 100 and just add some more whites for some areas. So I'm gonna add one over here and if I find adjust whites right there, then right click duplicate and I think make this bright spot even a little bit brighter and maybe do the same thing with the stuff down here. So it's just kind of an exaggeration of the lighting and the stars in this case, but from before to after, it's a little bit of a difference. 
I just want to check real quick if there is anything else I want to do before that I say I'm done, but yeah, well, maybe vignetting, but even vignetting doesn't really work. You know, there are other adjustments that I haven't used here, but I really am happy with how the picture looks at the end, even in terms of the detail. It's actually quite good if you ask me, especially considering I took this with Canon 80-55 kit lens along with a Canon 600D which is a like 5 year old beginner level DSLR. So from before here in the history, I believe this is where the raw file is, it's really crazy what you can get out of even such an old and inexpensive camera with such a crappy lens let's be honest here and this is the picture at the end, definitely I can see how you might think this is a little bit over the top, especially when seeing the before and after. This tutorial is mostly about showing you the possibilities and what you can do even with such an imperfect draw file as this one, how much you want to use in your own editing is definitely up to you. Anyways, thank you very much for watching, really hope you've enjoyed this video, if you did so, you can leave a like if you want, you can also leave a dislike if you didn't like it, really helps me to see which kind of videos you guys like and which you don't, so thank you for that. Anyways, take care and keep on editing great pictures.